exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your host and relationship expert, Spicy Madi. And on today's episode of The Spicy Life, get excited because we have how coronavirus affects your money. Yes, you heard me right. Your money is going to be affected. And with everything, just like food, family, friends, whatever, we have a relationship with money and how we use it to take care of our families, friends, loved ones is extremely important. So on today's episode, I have uh, Cherie Brady in the building. Round of applause. Okay, and she's not literally in the building. She <laughs> is on Zoom with me because we're under quarantine. But let me give you a little bit backstory on Cherie, give you her guest spotlight. But before I begin, I have to let you know that this is not legal advice. This is the personal opinion of Cherie Brady, who is the CEO and founder of the Brady Firm, Attorneys at Law. Cherie M. Brady has over a decade of experience as a litigator. She represents corporations, entertainers, athletes, small businesses, and individuals in a variety of matters, including contract drafting, negotiation, commercial litigation, products liability, medical malpractice, and premises liability. She has taken many catastrophic injury cases to trial, resulting in favorable verdicts for her clients. She's resolved countless cases with over a million dollars at issue. That's big money. Cherie also serves as an outside counsel for private companies and physician practice groups, negotiating and drafting employment, subcontractor, and professional service agreements. She advises clients on regulatory compliance, limiting liability, and contract disputes. Cherie loves that in her practice, she has the opportunity to represent some of the nation's largest automobile companies and also has the opportunity to advocate for individual victims and their families. Her experience achieving results for all types of clients gives her a unique perspective and comprehensive approach, and she believes that every client deserves a superior legal representation. I, on the other hand, have to give big ups to her and myself because her personal life story has been extremely spicy because she is happily married to her husband, who I, of course, introduced her to, made sure that they got it on and popping, and now they have two beautiful kids, thanks to me, a son and a daughter. <laughs> Welcome, Cherie. <laughs> you like how I had to like, give myself a lot of props right there? Of course. <laughs> it wouldn't be spicy if you didn't take credit for uh, everything. <laughs> everything amazing in anybody's life? No. <laughs> Comes back to spicy. <laughs> <laughs> the spicy life. Hello. No, I'm super happy to have you on today's episode because I realized I turned to you for a lot of things. We now are the closest of friends and not just because you are happy and in love because of me, but because we actually <laughs> love each other first. And so I hit you with all these questions as an entrepreneur, owning my own relationship company and matchmaking firm. And I'm like, wait, how does this affect my business? And instantly you started trying to like calm me down and give me, you know, friendly advice because you can't give legal counsel when we're not in a session. And I want to jump into all those questions, but first I want to warm you up. So before I get to ask you a million questions, you have to do your spice breakers with me. Okay, but before we even get to that, let's just talk about how I should be taking credit for making you the spicy life before <laughs> you were the spicy life because uh, we employed your matchmaking um, expertise early on and helped you find your true calling. So I think that uh, I should be getting, taking credit for that. It's a lawyer right there, right? Like, <laughs> I see how you did that. I see how you did that. She's good, you guys. She's good. <laughs> okay, so yes, big ups to you, big ups to you. Uh, so yes, The Spicy Life wouldn't have this if it wasn't for your love and support and helping me find my calling. But on today, we're going to go through SPICY to warm you up for The Spice Breakers. And so you have to tell everybody how you first fell in love with Selby. Me partner and um, was just something that I'd always been working towards since forever. It's always been a goal. So um, actually getting there and achieving it and realizing like I arrived, so to speak, for my professional goals, yet nothing actually changed. Mm -hmm. The next part of it being I didn't feel like I was getting um, the, uh, I guess, applaud or recognition from my husband that I thought I should get. Um, I had always been a cheerleader, literally, for him. Since you know, He's a professional coach. So <laughs> From his playing days uh, to coaching, um, literally just, you know, his number one supporter and fan. And um, 
and for every, you know a lot of other people in my life too and I just felt like he didn't fully you know give me the cheerleading that I deserved with making this major milestone um you know I think it's hard for people outside the legal profession to fully yeah. understand what goes into that but um I think it was more of a opening moment for me to realize I need to be that person cheerleader for myself um, because you can't expect something from someone else that you're not giving yourself. Kudos, kudos. Okay, you're gonna give us P for passion really quick. So you give us self notes, P for passion. And so you're gonna tell us, what are you passionate about? If I pick one, it would be education. I think education is just the foundation for so many things. Um, whether, you know, it, it offers kids so many options in life and relates back to the income disparity because education gives you tools and Op, again, options, opportunities. So um, I think that it's just something that we really have to work on in this country in general. Um, but education being power, something was embedded in me in an early age. And I truly believe it because I've seen it to be true. Amazing. And now you're going to tell us I for intimacy. Uh, what's your biggest turn on? What gets you hot and bothered? <sighs> okay, you don't laugh at me because people think that I'm not being serious, but I am. Um, <laughs> I am extremely turned on by a stimulating conversation. Um, I feel most connected with uh, my husband and even with friends when I can feel that we can really be ourselves um, and have conversations that are um, deeper and beneath the surf surface and take off pretenses. Um, but just you know, dig, dig a little deeper. I am an analytical person, obviously, by nature, and I like <laughs> to analyze all things, not just legal, but in our personal lives, and um, that that just gets me going. So you're saying every time I talk to you, you get wet? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can know myself. I think, I think I did say good <laughs> Is this why you don't answer for me? No. <laughs> okay, C is communication. You have to tell us, what's the best compliment you ever received? I think I would have to say my biggest um, compliment or the one that resonates with me the most is um, just the compliment of how do you do it all? People, when they make um, insinuations that I have it all together. Um, and I think that resonates with me so much because I'm always trying to find the balance between work and family and friends and uh, personal life and health um, and self. So um, it, it sparks a little bit of the imposter syndrome because reality is I don't ever have it all together, but <laughs> when people seem to think that I do, it, um, it, it feels good. You make, you make it look so good though. <laughs> You're going to just try. <laughs> okay, and then the last one is why for yes. When did you conquer fear? Tell us about a, cure, a fear that you conquered. When did you say yes? Yes to the unknown. Well, that's an easy one, given the recent turn of events in my career. <laughs> um, I would definitely say that um, me saying yes to what actually makes me happy and veering away from, um, you know, the expected path that um, I like to chart and stay on um, was a big moment for me when I left my large law firm to start my own firm. Obviously, all the entrepreneurs out there, yourself included, know that's a scary time. Ooh, um, I love that you're going through what I've been going through. Now you feel me. <laughs> and you're doing, I mean, you're doing a phenomenal job. Every time I call you, you're busy with clients. So clearly, <laughs> uh, you're doing something right. And when I called you the other day and you started, you know, telling me how busy you were, it was in response to what's going on right now with coronavirus and how you know we're stuck at home we're trapped but most people aren't taking into consideration the long-term effects or even the short-term effects that it has on our businesses and so that's what today's episode is about is you know how does this affect our relationship with our money how does it affect you know us entrepreneurs small businesses large businesses and employees you know of these companies you know what are going to be these ramifications but i'm going to just like dive deep into all the thousands of questions that I have for you. Okay, so what laws are put in place? Because this is the part that I like don't have as much knowledge of other than like what CNN and my husband's telling me and like what me and my friends are arguing about. What That's laws are you like put in place right now or what's going on that we should be in the know of that will affect us? The new legislation that was signed just 
two days ago um, into law, the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. Um, a lot of people are just want to know what is this? Um, how does it affect me? Does it affect me? And, um, you know, just kind of, I've been helping my clients sift through this, if it applies to them, what does it mean from what we know? Cause there is so limited knowledge of it at this time. What does it mean? What is it? <laughs> well, so the <laughs> two parts of it that I've been mostly focused on, um, with my clients. Um, and I think the problem with this is, is people are confusing the two sections. Um, one being uh, the emergency paid family leave or what people have been referring to as um, expanding FMLA. And then the second part being the paid sick leave section. Um, both of these sections are under the Families First Coronavirus Response Act with um, HR 6201, if anyone's really interested in looking at <laughs> The emergency paid family leave is family leave that's, um, it is an expansion on FMLA, but it's specifically for um, the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19. So, um, and then the, the second part also, the paid sick leave is another, um, is, it just addresses the sick leave that one may have to take for them or the, um, their loved ones that may take ill during this time. The other thing that's important to note though is um, before we even go into it, people want to know, does this apply to me? Yeah, does it? And um, this, so any organization um, that has less than 500 employees um, needs to know what's going on because um, we're employees that need to take time off work for a minor child because school or their place of child care is closed can still be paid for this time off. So generally, FMLA um, doesn't apply uh, to companies with um, less than 50 employees. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, um, it just addresses any organization with, again, less than 500 employees. Um, it's also an expansion because FMLA generally doesn't apply to an employee if they've been with the organization for less than 12 months, where in this emergency paid family leave, you only have to have been with the organization for 30 days, are entitled to up to 12 weeks leave to care for a child whose school's been closed down due to this coronavirus. So obviously there's twofold to that, you know, as an individual, we're employees, we're worried about how we're gonna balance all these things. But then as a company, you're now taking on the burden of having to pay this employee um, that, may, that can't work. And, um, you know, th that can be quite burdensome for yeah. smaller companies. So, like I was saying, the employee gets 12 weeks leave. Um, the first 10 days are unpaid, and that's important to know and important for people to know that um, they can elect to use accrued uh, sick or vacation time in that 10 days. But after the 10 days, basically the first two weeks, um, the next 10 weeks are paid by the employer at two, -third, two thirds of the employee's salary. So, um, and then there's also caps on it, like um, how much an employer has to pay is capped at $200 per day uh, or an aggregate of $10,000 um, total per employee. So um, not only are they taking on the expense of paying them, and, uh, but they're also having to compensate for um, the workload that's not being done right. for this person off. If we're not able to drive sales, because of this, then we're also not making as much money in to be able to afford to pay employees. Um, as it's written now, um, the legislation allows for the Secretary of Labor to carve out an exception for organizations with less than 50 employees. Mm -hmm. If um, they could show that the, this, these requirements would jeopardize their company's viability in the long term. But 
there's no specifics on that. So um, everyone's kind of on a, an awaiting point to see what the Secretary of Labor does with that and if this exception will apply and from a pragmatic standpoint, how would they go about applying for it if they do think it applies. Um, so there's still a lot of wait and see, but um, there is that caveat to maybe um, help companies that are even smaller that would have a, a bigger hardship by this. I thought I put my phone on vibrate. Sorry. But <laughs> uh, that's my money app letting me know. I'm still <laughs> um, <laughs> But not everybody's an entrepreneur. So if you are an employee, do we have reason to be concerned or fearful that our employer will say, we don't want to cover that. It's not cheaper to keep her. Absolutely, layoffs are a possibility. Again, this is just a little bit of a gray area at this point. I know there are companies who um, made the decision to lay off, knowing that this was coming in the um, coming down the pipeline. You know, we've known that this legislation would be going potentially coming forward for a little bit, and you know, it, it happened very quickly. Um, but it doesn't go into effect until probably a April second. Yeah. Um, it's again, the way it's written 15 days, um, has to go into effect no later than 15 days from the date it was signed, which was signed on the 19th, March 19th. So, um, we're waiting for the exact date from the secretary of treasury to know when it's going to apply, but we know it's going to be soon and at least by April 2nd. So in anticipation, there are companies who, um, may choose to lay off um, employees and but exactly what the ramifications are for that in this great in this window of time we don't exactly know yet i mean we know typically you know how it's handled and how layoffs are handled and the notice that's required from from some states like california before you can lay off um, those things are still applicable um, but there are exceptions to that too with you know with extenuating circumstances and natural disasters. So again, we'll, we will just have to see how all of this applies to um, specifically the coronavirus legislation that's coming out. Yeah, because we it's so new, we haven't experienced this before. I have already, you know, eavesdropped on conversations. Um, <laughs> you know, people are having, no. shared with me <laughs> on um, just people who are getting let go of and, been like, wow, I can't believe this is really happening. You know, it seems like the companies are over here saying, you know, well, just for right now, if, you know, business picks back up and this in soon, we can hire you back. But just like any relationship, I would be like, do you really want to be in a makeup breakup situation with a company or an employer who you trusted that puts you in a compromising situation? Can you really say that they're not going to let you go when you do go back or that they really are going to come back to you? From the company's perspective, sometimes they may be even protecting you and laying you off um, if you're still able to collect unemployment, the position is no longer there because the viability of the company is just not there. I mean, a lot of companies are having to shut down for an unknown amount of time. Then you're adding on that you're gonna, going to have to pay salary you know, employees who um, aren't able to work on top of it, they know, as some companies know, that they just can't survive this. Um, so they have, they're trying to get in front of it. And, um, and sometimes that looks like layoffs. You, it's me. And <laughs> unfortunately, we're just not emotionally available right now or financially available to be able to take care of your needs. So, <laughs> It does sound like when you spend it, when you put it that way, that it may be in our best interest, you know, to, and, you know, for us not to react, you know, angry and feel, you know, betrayed, like they can't, they're not, they can't do it. They, if they can't do it, they can't do it. So, I mean, that does ease like some of that concern and fear when you don't take it personal and you're like, dang, they're just not capable. Yeah, I mean, it does ease some of that, I guess, resentment associated with it potentially because right. nobody wins ultimately if the company goes under, but um, it, at the end of the day, it doesn't pay your bills, right? Um, so it, it's still a very difficult situation. And I know all the clients that I've advised are in a, you know, taking all of this very seriously and nobody wants to be that person to have to have layoffs. Um, 
but um, there is a bright side to all of this though the um, for for companies who are able to um, weather the storm so to speak for you know through the end of the year because this legislation just um, does just apply through the end of the year there is a tax tax incentive that basically um, offsets any of the money paid um, to these el any eligible employees, I guess, uh, relief from liability on their social security, the social security tax that they would pay. So basically they are getting um, an offset in, in tax benefit for 100% of the money that's paid out under um, the two, two portions of this act that we're, that we're discussing. So that's a good point right there then. So us as employee, employers, um, I don't start trying to figure out how I can, you know, eliminate my team. I'm like, <laughs> we have consultants, we have, you know, my creative director, like there's people that I need to, you know, take into consideration. So it sounds like you're saying before we're like doing something crazy and calling, you know, Dracarys on everyone that um, Game of Thrones reference for Sheree, because she doesn't <laughs> watch, gotta watch TV. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, before we say like, you know, let them all go, burn them all. Um, that we actually get an incentive for paying them and still continuing to pay their salaries or keeping them on the payroll at the end of the year. Absolutely. I mean, um, and I think that's the way um, the law was written to, you know, try to benefit both sides of this. And ultimately, everyone's just trying to keep the economy going. Um, the second part of this, though, is the paid sick leave. And that's generally um, looking at a two week window. So it's basically two weeks of paid sick leave for, um, or 10 days, it's 80 hours for full-time employees. But for anyone who um, has to, um, you know, take sick leave for themselves or to care for another person. So um, with this particular part, um, there's a list of reasons that can be used. Um, and then it looks very similar to sick leave on the state level, how it, how it is already. But the first part, you know, being an employee um, is sick themselves and they need to be in isolation because of COVID-19 or um, yeah. told either because they have it or because they're um, suspected to have it and they've been told by a healthcare provider to isolate themselves. Um, if they're, or if they're experiencing symptoms and um, waiting a diagnosis, um, this, those are all reasons that you would be taking this or could utilize this two-week leave, sick leave, um, for yourself being sick. And in that situation, the employee is entitled to, um, they should be paid their regular rate of pay. Um, and the cap on that one, I think, is $511 per day or an aggregate over the two weeks of $5,110, actually. Um, there's also um, a situation to be able, you can use this sick leave for um, if you need to t care for another. And in this instance, it could be a family member um, or it could be having to care for your child because um, the child school or daycare is, is closed. Um, and under this portion of caring for another, the employee is paid two thirds of their regular rate of pay. And that's limited at $200 a day or an aggregate of, of $2,000 over the two weeks. So I hear what you're saying as far as what rights we have as an employee or with the benefits that the sick leave that we have access to. One of my concerns is my mother, in addition to spicy mama hot sauce that she runs, she also is in shipping, right? And she has been told uh, by her company that she still needs to come to work because things need to be shipped. And it's, you know, one of the um, priorities right now in order for us to get anything that we need. If she were to potentially get sick and I need to go take care of her, I'm a business owner. So are there any benefits or anything that I can have as a business owner having to take, you know, having to leave from the spicy life to go take care of her? Do we have, you know, do us entrepreneurs have any benefits or that we might be receiving from the government? Um, that's not specifically addressed. If obviously if you are um, an employee of the company, then, you know, that could potentially be um, like applying access to salary. 
right? Pulling to you. <laughs> What's that? Like she would get salary from her company while she's sick, but I taking off to take care of her. I would just have to pay myself out of my own company versus the government funding anything. Or would I, are they, would they be cutting me a check for going to take care of her? Um, that's not contemplated in this act. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the good news is there's still lots of legislation and talks and things that are going on to try to um, continuously help Americans through this time. Um, but these two portions um, of the Response Act at this point are, are pretty limited. Well, and what I've been looking at a little bit more closely and on calls about just yesterday is kind of what this looks like from a liability perspective. Um, if contracted um, in your place of employment or we've seen some litigation already in a situation where the, the virus has been contracted on cruise ships and people yeah. are bringing claims saying, you know, you as a cruise ship should have known um, and you, you know, did things you should have done taking precautions to prevent me from getting this. So I think we're going to see a whole host of litigation. Well, we will see a whole host of litigation. <laughs> you're, uh, you're ready. <laughs> there's not a lot of things I can guarantee you um, as a lawyer. Uh, you know, people are, I'm sure, tired of me saying there's no guarantee. I can advise you on both sides. But um, one thing I can guarantee is that we will see a, um, litigation um, surrounding this and from a general liability perspective and then also from the perspective of all the events that's been ca um, had to be canceled and looking at um, you know your insurance policies as it relates to that there's a lot of already talk about whether this is actual physical damage can companies um, recover um, for the loss basically from their business insurance policy so that's, again, another way that um, we're strategizing to um, look at different theories of recovery, you know, for my, for my business clients. I'm mean, definitely being affected by this. Like businesses are, I mean, this is my personal opinion, but like absolutely freaking lutely we're being affected by this shutdown of everything. Traveling, I mean, there's clients that I was supposed to be, you know, traveling to New York for, or, you know, I'm supposed to be going on my scouting outings and, you know, now I have to rearrange my curriculum in order to make sure that needs are being met right now and people are still connecting and still finding love. So I, in particular, am someone who I know is being affected, but we don't know yet though what I have a right to be able to claim on my insurance policy. Like that's still up in the air because we've never had this Corona issue before. Well, we can, um, there's, there's some policies that, you know, you, you can look at and, and see pretty quickly that there's no, uh, there wouldn't be coverage or this doesn't apply. So I would definitely say to have your lawyer take a look at your policy if you have such a policy in place. Um, to, to anybody who, who has any concern or, or think that they may have a claim under their policy. There's also a lot, like, in, only because this is on topic with, like, the things that I care about in relationships. Um, people who are being financially affected in their relationship, i.e. weddings that are being canceled, honeymoons that are being canceled, bachelorette parties, bachelor parties that are being canceled. Do any of these people who aren't able to attend events or experiences, tickets um, to festivals and stuff, whatever that may be, do any of us have rights to getting our money back or is it like 100% being forfeit? Because there's nothing usually when we buy tickets that we read that say, you know, in case of Corona, no, you know, no refund. Like this is something that's so new. Should we be trying to fight for our rights and get our money back on some of this stuff? Well, like most of my answers, it depends. <laughs> um, and in that particular situation, I mean, if, obviously if you have uh, trip insurance or a, event um, insurance, like we talked about earlier, um, it may be more specifically addressed, um, you know, natural disaster or sickness if um, those things are addressed. Um, so it really depends on what you're talking about, if there's insurance, what the, the terms of that are. Um, sometimes, even if you don't have insurance, there are exceptions in, um, in your payments for natural disaster, the, you know, acts of God, things beyond control. So um, you just, you really have to look at um, specific, um, basically contracts that we make every day. Give us some advice on what, if we have a business partner, right? Because just like 
we have to have these conversations with our um, personal partner at home, our romantic partner. What does the conversation look like with our business partner? What's the first thing that we should be saying to them right now of, hey, you know, my, to my investor, hey, to my business partner, let's start considering this. For your business partner, it's infor- important to try to get ahead of this as much as possible. It's kind of in a situation where none of us really want to deal with it because there's so much unknown. Mm-hmm. But like I said earlier, there's comfort and knowledge. So just understanding things as they're coming down the pipeline, legislation as it's coming out. Um, and, you know, stay, I would, I would tell them to meet with their attorneys ASAP and just stay abreast of what's what's going on and how that applies to them so that you can continuously make educated decisions. Um, Unfortunately, some of it is just a wait and see because we have to, you know, get more specific direction and and kind of see um, what the legislation looks like, how it's executed, and um, also what what courts are going to do with it in in terms of litigation. So, um, again, you just getting on top of it and addressing things as, as soon as possible is always good. I think that you're right. The more that we are educated, the more, you know, research that we do, the information that you're providing, uh, it definitely opened up doors for me to then have a conversation with my husband. Uh, cause he too is, you know, um, we're all affected by this, but having to pretend like, you know, nothing's happening is a lot more painful down down the road than you know because it's not this whole like oh we're just gonna wait and see what happens between you know him and my careers we started right now deciding like okay this is what we're gonna do as far as um not just relationship goals but like goals that are going to be affecting our family moving forward things that we've invested in things that we may need to start reevaluating but like not having open communication and transparency you know i had to come to him first and be like, hey, I'm concerned about this. If I would have just played superwoman and not had that conversation, then we wouldn't have, you know, opened the door and really get intimate with what he was experiencing as well. And, you know, even providing each other an opportunity to not just comfort, but to like strategize. But if we don't know that this stuff is going on legally, like how would I even know to, you know, have these conversations? Right. And that and that's why it's important just to get the conversation started, even when you don't necessarily know what they look like, right? So you don't know when you're speaking to your husband how it's going to go, what's going to come of it. Or, and ultimately, there may be nothing that either of you can really come up with that's going to, quote unquote, fix anything right now. Yeah. But, you know, the the weight that's lifted from just that communication and um, talking to each other and understanding how each other feel um, can be so helpful, as you know. So same thing with your business. So, you know, I can't, as an attorney, and in, in advising my clients a lot of things, I'm not able to give them necessarily direct answers on or, you know, guarantee them anything one way or another, but being able to have those open communications and advise them as to where we are with this and what we do know um, can be so helpful and just kind of having helping them flush through the issues and concerns and things to even think about. I love this. And this is definitely going to help um, some relationships out there and open up some doors to having conversations about finances, which a lot of people don't want to talk about (laughs) when it comes to, you know, even dealing with their own, you know, financial issues or financial concerns, like having those conversations are important. Um, So I applaud you for, you know, coming on, even though you're not allowed to give, you know, legal advice. If my audience or listeners did want to seek you out to ask one-on-one questions that they would be able to get advice or hire you, how would they reach you and find you? Reach out to us on our website. You can call our office anytime, 404-885-6643. Again, that's 404-885-6643. You can also uh, reach out to to me or um, the firm via email at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at bradyfirm.com. So- Before I let you go, you have to answer one naked truth question. So if you could body swap, Sheree, with anyone for the day, who would it be? Ooh, body swap? Yes. Who would be the person for the day? Live their life. So hard. Um, I would typically have to say Holly Berry. Um, Although I know your long time. uh, Hello, (laughs) J-Lo. And the way that... um, she worked in the, in the Super Bowl performance. I don't know. I may have to join you on that one too. 
<laughs> okay, as long as you're not body swapping the same day I am, we both can't be <laughs> Let me put something out there though. What I do love about Cherie is that she really does like manage it all. I know you say that you, you know, do a great job at making it look like you take on, you know, a lot and wear many hats, but literally you are running your own law firm. You were a partner at your firm. You are supporting your husband, who's a professional coach. You have two kids and you're managing their social lives in addition to their education and raising them. And you're doing all of this, like first in your family to go to college. No, right no. <laughs> she's Puerto Rican and black. So, you know, she's <laughs> You really are phenomenal, and you're really great at picking friends. So <laughs> you have it all, and you're extremely, extremely bright, beautiful, and intelligent, and um, spiritual, an amazing person, and you know, wise way beyond your years. She's so, really laying it on today, ladies. <laughs> so I would say, if anybody does, you know, need that additional, like. Uh, legal advice, but also someone who understands, you know, the the running, you know, a, a business and, you know, being a female entrepreneur and to you fellas as well, like she manages her husband. So <laughs> she's like available for that. And you can trust yourself with her because she's also, you know, a very personable person as well. She's a very loving and caring person. Um, and she's, you know, living and walking in her purpose in life. And I'm all about being purpose driven. So I'm just advising everybody to start flooding your, your phones <laughs> and your websites right now. But <laughs> Um, but I, I know I have to let you go because you have, you know, clients that you actually like really have to deal with um, <laughs> some buyers out really quick. But uh, like Sheree said, you guys can, you know, follow her on social. You guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at Spicy Madi. Make sure that you go to the spicylife.com for any relationship advice or to schedule a consultation with me. Uh, this is a great time to be dating. I'm posting all kinds of content and information on tips. But if you want that one-on-one -on -one service so that you can be prepared after coronavirus is over and start getting really uh, emotionally and physically intimate, uh, you can go to the spicylife.com and schedule a consultation immediately. I'm here for you. Uh, and we can start instantly. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. A spicy life.